Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We look at the Oshun elections and we have a lady and a fine gentleman who joins the conversation. Nico Gule is on standby. He joins us via Zoom and we also have Antonia Onder who is a, a senior programs officer at Yaga Africa. Antonia, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right, then. And Nika Gule, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning to our viewers. I'm happy to be here. So, so I mean, let's just go with it now. And we start with the figures. A number of registered voters, according to INEC, is 1,952,387. Now, accredited voters, uh, it's been pegged at 827,000. 218 and valid votes at 804,450 rejected votes we're looking at 18,674 and a total uh, vote cast at 823,124 of course El Shun state has an estimated population of about 4.7 million as of 2016 uh, it's no longer news that Ademola Deleke of the People's Democratic Party was declared winner after winning with uh, you know huge margin, defeating the All Progressive Congress to become the winner of that elections. And making sense of all of this, we have Antonia who joins the conversation on there, who is a senior programs officer of Yaga Africa. And Yaga Africa has been on top of these elections. Uh, they've had a lot of uh, personnel being deployed to monitor the elections. A course and involved in the analysis as well. Nika Gula is also a political analyst, joins the conversation. But I'd like to start with the uh, lady, of course, ladies first, that's what they say. Antonia Onda, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. Yeah. How would you describe uh, yeah. the Oshun election 2022, especially with the involvement of your organization? Um. We described the election as um, um, it, it was successful. When you say an election is successful, you compare it with um, pre uh, previous elections and you see how INEC has improved in their deployment, um, the introduction of the um, new electoral act, how they have implemented it. Just coming from a um, there are a few improvements they have done, which made the, the, the process um, um, better. And so uh, I, I will really say that the, um, the election was um, a good one. And you can also see that um, the election was concluded and the process went very fast. And this could also be from um, our own observation. We saw that INEC um, deployed their staff very early. Materials were uh, got to the pulling unit on time, and then it commenced um, on time, which um, really uh, actually influenced um, how it, it turned out. And so, on the part of INEC, it, it was just um, a very good one and an improvement, and we hope for better uh, improvement of the implementation in future. And also for the citizens um, who came out and conducted them, themselves um, on election day, uh, we encourage them more. Uh, but we can actually see that uh, people uh, are taking the, the process seriously. Uh, even the political parties have actually seen that, yes, the votes really count. And so uh, it was a good one. All right, Anthony, uh, uh, on the was a great one that you have actually brought there, but we'll definitely come back to you now. Uh, it's important that you turn off uh, the devices. It's more like you can eat your cake and have it back. So if you have, uh, you know, maybe the TV on or something, because we're having a, a feedback no. from your uh, end. But we'll come back to you in no time. All right. We also have Nika Gule. Nika Gule, what parts of the world are you in at this time? Last time we spoke, you were in the UK. I'm in London, the United Kingdom. Okay, so you're not back in Nigeria. All right, then. Uh, how would you describe the elections, looking at the results and following all of the procedures? What would you really say um, that election was? Can you say that it was free, fair, and credible? Thank you very much, Messi. I, I will describe the Osho gubernatorial elections that happened over the weekend, that it is a watershed in the democratic journey in Nigeria, 
it is a dawn of a new era to see an incumbent governor upstaged is not an easy thing because there is something that is called the power of incumbency. And that includes the fact that an incumbent who is in power has control of resources, has control of people around him. And not only that, the incumbent belongs to the ruling party at the national level. And for him to be defeated in this election shows that a number of things must have come together. Firstly, INEC certainly did his work because if INEC did not do his work, we will not be having this kind of results. It also shows that the people of Oshun State stepped out and spoke with their PVCs because without the people voting, we cannot have this result that we have today. And so for me, this is really good news. Heading into 2023, that the people who doubted that PVCs don't matter, our votes don't count, have been proved wrong in Ocean State. And if there is anybody who is yet to get on the electoral register, now that INEC has extended registration to the 31st of this month, please go and get yourself on the electoral register. Because Oshu State has shown to us clearly that with our votes, we can always elect the leaders of our choice. So this is my summary about the outcome of the Oshun election. Well, uh, you know, as we proceed in the course of all of this, Antonia Onda. Well, yes, now, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. So um, you, we have like about 80, over 80 civil rights organization under the ages of the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room. Mm -hmm. Uh, who raised doubt over the credibility of the governorship elections in Oshun State. And I know that your organization, um, you know, was very, very present. They had huge presence in uh, the Oshun State elections and they were almost everywhere. Do you agree with this? They're the saying that, you know, the process wasn't entirely free, nor fair, because uh, you had um, the fact that... Uh, the credibility of the elections was not sustainable. So some quarters reported that they were gone short, or they said that they were vote buying. All of this would probably mad the entire process. What are your thoughts? Okay, um, for Young Africa, uh, we deployed um, citizens observers to specific polling units. Uh, we were we covered um, two hundred and fifty polling units. And then we have um, about um, 32 other observers who rove around to observe the process around the, the local governments, um, the 30 local governments. And so, um, good. Uh, we we were able to observe some of um, irregularities and um, especially, like you mentioned, um, voter inducement in, in in some of the places. And um, then um, there was also issue of secrecy of ballots. So this tells you, like Elia said, that uh, these people have understand that the votes really count, and so um, they come to the polling unit uh, um, to buy votes. Uh, we in some of the polling units where our observers uh, were, uh, they witness or they observe um, vote buying by political parties. Um, agents at the Pune unit who um, were inducing people with money uh, to vote in favor of their um, political parties. And we also saw the um, the issue with the secrecy of ballot. Uh, it is, the law says that the citizens um, will vote in secret and then come out in an open to, to cast their vote. And the um, the cubicle is should, uh, should be set up in a place where uh, people will not see how people are uh, 
um, Tom Prince or which party they actually voted for. But the way um, we observe um, in some polling units, people could see how um, citizens were marking their vote and um, uh, to, to see exactly the party that they voted for, of which um, was something that um, undermined the process. And because of that, um, uh, the security officers and even the INEC officials should, um, uh, in going forward to other elections, should be mindful of, of the way that these um, cubicles are set up. And then the security officers should also stay by so that um, people would actually um, uh, do the right thing. Um, you know, when you when a voter votes after some printing, there is a, a way of holding it and 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 it, I think the flat the roll and flatting method, and then bring it out and then have people stay away from that cubicle so that they won't actually see because they were actually using that to confirm that there's this particular people voted for um, the party they want before they go drop it on the, on the ballot paper and then go um, to, to, to collect their money uh, and that. And so um, um, those were some of the things that we observed. And also um, there were a few uh, polling units where voters were intimidated and um, then the beavers um, malfunctioned in some places, but the good, uh, good enough, it was replaced. And so the process uh, still went on in, in, in those areas. So the basic things that um, uh, um, uh, issues with the election that we say was this engagement and um, the secrecy of ballot that was compromised in some places. Let's quickly take this video right now on our track, if you like to say. When we return, we continue with the conversation. We have Anik Ogule and also Antonia Onda with us. This is the observation we have seen. I was there live. I was the one that paid attention and I looked at what was happening and I accosted the lady and I called the security agency. In fact, when I was complaining, uh, there was a radio station, I think Reef, and uh, one radio station from me that interviewed me. He said, was there in there? Was there no, I, uh, what do you call it, EFCC? I said, who is EFCC here? None. There was no EFCC in the new book. So there was no EFCC to arrest. So I can arrest. We observed it, and then we can't do any arrest. The police officers there, they can't do any arrest. They were just sitting down. In fact, it was by their side. They were going to collect money from for. For the food that they are, for the food that they have sold, I don't know how they do it. They give them small paper, and I don't know how they. But what I observed, and we saw this local government, yeah, the local government vehicle, parked behind the building. There was a lady inside. There was another man, and they were the one who were exchanging, um, what do you call it, cash for for wood. It's unfortunate. Well, uh, we're still on the breakfast and we're looking at the Oshun elections and everything that panned out during the elections. Because it's, it's part of our democratic process, we have Antonia Onder, who's a senior program officer of Yaga Africa, and Nika Gule, who's a public affairs analyst, who joins the conversation all the way from the United Kingdom. Uh, Nika Gule, let's come to you now. And Antonia has talked about secrecy vote. Uh, voter, I mean, you know, the secrecy of voting or voter secrecy, however you want to put it, put it. But it was also something that was very eminent because we saw it on social media, on Twitter and other, you know, platforms. And we know what the Electoral Act talks about this, if France had it. Uh, the question now would be, was the entire process really free, fair and credible? What are your thoughts, Nika Goulet? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Messi. And I also want to thank Antonia uh, from Yaga because uh, they are doing a great job. I mean, they, they are doing a thankless job, but it's what is needed. You know, this is part of governance. We all have to have hands on, on, on deck to ensure that those who have elected are doing the right thing. So when we come to vote buying, uh, first of all, uh, this is a new lexicon in the political landscape. And it's coming because the politicians have realized that the votes are not counting. And that is why for people who are still doubting that votes don't count, they need to understand that politicians will not be buying votes if the votes don't count. Because gone are the days when they snatched the ballot boxes, mass thumb printed and all of that. They didn't need our votes that time. But all those things now have been dealt with, with a strengthened electoral law. So that is the first aspect of it. The second aspect of it is that what is happening in these elections 
Ekiti, Oshun, and maybe even Anambra, should be test runs, should be taken as test runs by INEC and the security agencies as preparations for 2023. So those issues that they are seeing, like vote buying, like the lack of secrecy of the ballot, which Antonia is talking about, and other logistical issues that they are encountering, that is the job of INEC cut out for them. They need to fix those things and get those things ready so that when we come to the 2023 general elections, INEC will be ready to deliver a credible and fair elections that globally people will look at it and say it delivered the verdict of the people. So vote buying, which has become the new lexicon in our political uh, landscape, will not happen if the security agencies do their job. And for security agencies to do their job is that I heard INEC say, or was even the police, the DRG say that, they have extended the cordon around polling units to 300 meters. 300 meters is like three football, uh, three lengths of football field that people should not get close. So how can someone be in a position to watch the voting pattern of the electorate if that cordon was enforced by the security agencies? Because once you are not able to see what people voted for, they will probably not buy the votes because I can take your money and go and vote my mind. The only way they buy votes is that they have to find a way to see that I actually voted for a particular party for which they are going to pay me. And that is why people used to snap their votes, their, 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 their ballot paper. But the security agencies must ensure that people are not taking their phones to the polling units. That is also banned. You know, Nick Agule, I understand. Nick Agule, I understand, and let me come in now at this point. Uh, we understand the fact that, you know, vote buying, uh, the Electoral Act frowns at it, and, you know, you have all of that very valid statement that's been put out. Um, we also know that INEC had said that they were going to be very strong, and as a matter of fact, police officers were also deployed. I mean, security personnel were deployed to ensure that those who were involved in vote buying were apprehended and arrested. But does it really change the issue? Why do people engage in vote buying? Have we even answered the question? Now, it brings me back to the fact that the Olowo of Iwo land uh, had mentioned uh, that Oba Akambi, Oba Akambi had mentioned that vote buying cannot stop in Nigerian democracy with the way you know politicians run the system. And he constantly talked about it. I mean, he talked about the challenge that the people have to get what they can get because the situation is bad. It was like, you know what, we understand that this is what you're doing, but let's come here and get what we can get and just move away. It's our own, even if it's 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 era. I mean, you, you ask yourself, what can this even do for the people? Vote buying is one thing that has constantly truncated you know, the democratic process. And we can't say that the, it wasn't part of the system. You have uh, Yega Africa confirming that as well, uh, where you have Antonia uh, on the phone this morning, I mean, being part of the conversation, and we're going to get to her. So the question here is, is that the approach? Because the approach has been, we have to you know, use force, uh, arrest anyone involved in vote buying. Don't we also stop about the fact that we also look at the fact that the people are suffering. They haven't benefited from the dividends of democracy. And there's so much poverty in the land. So you, you are very correct that the vote buying finesse can be tackled from the soft perspective and the hard perspective. The hard perspective is the security agencies doing their work. On the softer side, we need to do a lot of voter education. You see, the people who are selling their votes, they are doing so out of ignorance. Perhaps because of the harsh economic uh, situation we face in Nigeria, but despite that, they need to be told that that vote you are selling for 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 naira is mortgaging your future for the next four years. 
that that vote you are selling is what has exactly pinned you down into poverty. So we need to, to, to do more, and INEC needs to lead. You know, the media houses need to lead. Civil society needs to take a lead here to educate people. But then the other aspect of it is this. Because of all of the shenanigans that have been happening in the electoral process right from 1999, especially in the first three electoral cycles, those who will most likely not say their votes have totally alienated them from the themselves from the process. They are the ones that don't step out. They don't come out. Either they have not registered to vote or they have their voters cast, but they never step out to vote. And that's a chunk of who we are talking about. Because if you look at 19, if you look at 2019 elections, voter turnout was around the, the neighborhood of 30 percent, 30 plus percent. It then meant that about 70 percent of Nigerians who were on the electoral register never stepped out to vote. In that group, the majority are those that will approach a ballot box and vote with their conscience and vote for the right candidates. So a, a lot of work needs to be done to convince this group to also come to the ballot box. Because if they come to the ballot box, they will probably overwhelm those who are selling their votes so that at the end of the day, we will still get competent leaders emerge. Mm. All right, we, we still have Antonia on there who is uh, still with the show this morning. Antonia, are you still with us? Yes, I'm with you. All right, so let's get to, you know, the part of voter apathy. We're talking about the turnout now. Would you say that the, the turnout of voters has been very impressive, especially looking at the population of the youths? Now, a little bit of background. In Oshun governorship elections, figures, we're looking at figures from 2003, 2014, and 18. Now, in 2003, we had registered voters, figure pegged at 1.37 million persons, and the total vote cast 800 and uh, 1,081 voters, and the, the you know the percentage voter turnout percentage was pegged at 58.63 percent in 2014. 1.41 million uh, registered voters with 750,000 and 2,000 vote casted, and uh, the percentage was pegged at uh, you know 53.14 percent. In 2018, where you also had a delicate losing that election to, you know, uh, just a few, what you want to say, there was a rerun election, election was inconclusive. 1.68 million persons registered to vote and uh, 769,005, uh, you know, voters turnout. Uh, then you also have the percentage at 45.74%. Now we have in 2022, prior to 2023, uh, 40 elections, uh, you have uh, registered voters at 1,952,387. Antonia, how would you describe the voter turnout for Oshun elections? Would you say that uh, we experience voter apathy? Uh, looking at the number of votes that were casted, 800, uh, you know, 804,450, you know, votes that were casted, if I'm not mistaken now, 823,000, I beg your pardon, uh, 124 votes that were casted. Would you say that we experienced voter apathy? If you look at the figures that you call, I, let me talk on these statistics, you can see um, there is a decline in the percentage. We had in 2014, we have 58% um, of the, of the uh, people who turned out. It dropped to, um, uh, dropped to 45. And now we have um, um, about 42% um, that um, turned out to vote in this um, um, current election. So you can see there is uh, an obvious decline and with increase in the number of people who registered to vote uh, because um, um, we just, uh, the new registration was suspended in um, Oshun for, to provide for the people who registered to get their PVCs. So if you add the PVCs collected um, after the new registration, it increased the number of people uh, who should have come out to vote, but yet we have a decline. 
And this comes to the distrust that citizens have uh, on the process. And you also asked a question earlier that uh, why do politicians um, buy votes? And so these are the reasons uh, I need to, uh, we need to tell the citizens that these people are buying your vote because your vote actually counts. And so uh, we should encourage citizens to, 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 to come out and participate. If you complain about um, a situation, and this is a process where you can make a change, so they should come. And for us at the Aga Africa, we look at election as a wholesome activity, not just the election day. So we engage in voter education, pre-election period, and other activities to encourage people to vote. And so we should have every um, stakeholder in this process um, educate the citizen on this because um, we cannot, we will not have the moral justification to comment or to, 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 to get angry on the, pro on the process we do not engage ourselves. If you know these politicians are not working and you think that um, they do not represent you well, and this is the part, this is the chance for them to show or for citizens to show that, yes, um, I, I also participate, I also contribute as a citizen, as a citizen, and, and that will show by coming out to participate on election. And so it's very bad that we keep having a decline in, um, in, in, uh, citizens' participation, and so uh, we really should uh, look into it as stakeholders in election um, through voter education, sensitization, and um, uh, we'll collaborate to, to have so, so, so would you and say that, them... yeah, Antonia, I mean, the question here is, yeah. in all of this, I mean, valid points that you've raised, but would you say that we experience voter apathy in Oshun elections? Yeah, because you can obviously see that from the statistics and is 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 declining rather than increasing and so people actually like i said do not trust the process and um in turn did not come out to participate and so there is this apathy that um they feel their vote will not count um whatever it, it is uh, the decision has already been made it's just um a, a, an election day the process comes and happen and then they announce to whoever they want but we um um, should encourage the citizens um, that um, it is important that they participate and that um, INEC has uh, put um, a lot of strategies in place. They have tightened a lot of knots that is making it difficult for this politician to manipulate. And that's why they're actually re um, um, retiring to the um, voter uh, inducement. And so the citizens should understand and, and participate because there is actually an apathy. In, in the voter, uh, in the citizens participating in elections. But, um, I mean, the fact that we're still in the process of a lot of persons, I mean, I'm saying this now because the process of uh, persons getting registered and, you know, you know, sorting out voters card issues is still ongoing and all thanks to INEC because they have actually sustained the process. But if you also look at it, in a kitty elections, the figures were really high and Yaga Africa really frowned at it. Now um, in the Oshun elections, we're looking at, uh, you know, votes that were void, rejected votes, if you want to say. 18,674 votes were rejected, not valid votes. Don't you think that all of this also contributes to the fact that we do not have an impressive figure in terms of, you know, uh, the number of persons who turned out? If you look at uh, the number of registered voters uh, this time, 1.9 million, or approximately 2 million, if you want to say, uh, juxtaposing that with the number of persons who counted their vote. Some people would say that this is quite impressive and all the factors would have been very responsible because you would have issue of double registration. Uh, as a matter of fact, that a lot of people are not aware because if you registered you know, a couple of times, it would just disenfranchise you. So don't you think that all of this also might be a reason and not necessarily the fact that the people are tired? It's quite impressive, some people have said, or over, I mean, half a million person turned out, 800 and something, to decide. As against 1.9 million, people think that this is a plus and this is good for democracy. So um, when people participate, it's actually a plus um, um, to the process. And um, you talked of rejected votes. Um, sometimes is an um, issue of, um, of education and uh, a proper education 
on how to vote right. And that's why we also encourage uh, political parties who are the first beneficiaries of, um, of votes to citizens while, they, comp while they, they engage in their campaigns on how to vote right. It reduces the number of um, uh, rejected um, ballots that we experience on election day. And, and looking at the registration, and um, so you talked about um, um, double registration. And for INET, for any double registration, uh, if they run the uh, um, office um, after their reg the registration, they cut down, um, they delete the double registration that they already have, which means that these people have already registered. And so, and at the end, they bring out the figure of valid registration that, um, that they have per state. And then um, we they release that data um, ahead of the election. But I think uh, for now uh, we should actually look at the number of registered uh, of PVCs collected rather than the number of um, registered voters on on election day because um, the people who collect their PVCs are the only people who have um, uh, uh, will be allowed to vote. So we should actually do this analysis based on the PVCs collected at, um, in the state rather than the number of registered voters because a lot of, reg uh, or a lot of PVCs are still hanging at the INEC offices that um, the citizens have not collected. And so it wouldn't even be fair to, to um, uh, even um, uh, put the, the the voter turnout on the number of registered voters, but it should rather be on the number of PVCs collected um, in the state. All right, then let's also have Nika Gule now, on, um, you know, come in as well. Nika Gule. Yes, I'm here. Yes, would you say that you're impressed with, you know, the voter turnout? Um, we're going to get into other parts. I'm hoping that we have enough time, you know, to talk about it now, looking at the Electoral Act. And the fact that some people think that it's a plus, but looking at uh, how, you know, the Oshun people decided this election, 1.9 million persons, you know, registered, registered voters. And uh, the turnout, about 800 and something, or approximately 900,000, if you want to say. But let's leave it at 800. Would you say that this has been very impressive? How would you describe, you know, voter apathy in Oshun State? I think the people of Oshun are politically aware and mature, uh, more than uh, the average state out there in Nigeria. For them to post near 50% voter turnout is a good thing, because at the national level, we are posting voter turnout in the 30s, in the 30s uh, percentage. So that, that is uh, very good for Oshun. However, as uh, Antonia is saying, the, the numbers are declining because if the voter register is increasing in numbers, you expect uh, the number of vote, voters turning out to also be increasing, but it's, it's on a decline. So it is generally something that uh, needs to be watched uh, all over Nigeria, uh, especially as we head into the 2023 election. So we need more voter education to get people to the electoral register and for those who are on the electoral register, get them to the ballot boxes. But there's also work that needs to be done by INEC. You know, INEC needs to clean up the register because I am not sure INEC is up to date with cleaning the register in terms of people who have passed away, you know, uh, double registrations and people who maybe uh, are under age or shouldn't be on the re electoral register and all of that. Because all those numbers are counting towards the total number of registered voters. And you will discover that uh, those guys are not there to, to step out to vote. So they, they are, they are, they are, their numbers are counting negatively to voter turnout. I mean, uh, there are countries like here in the UK where I reside, there are very simple things that the government of Nigeria can, can do. For instance, we need a database of Nigerians. In the UK here, it is called National Insurance Number. You know, once a child is born, that child is entered into a database of, of, of citizens. And the, the, the details about that child, their name, their date of birth, their parents, and all of that are captured. And it is from there that you are going to link to the voters register. So it's also uh, the fact that that national insurance is cleaned 
with uh, people who have passed away. You know, because like here in the UK, if someone dies, you can never go and bury that person except you go and get a permit from the government. Because the government wants to know how that person died. He did die of natural causes or there was an issue that the police needs to be aware of. And so that national database of citizens is constantly being cleaned up. Okay, Nick Agule. Beds added, deaths removed. And so we have a database we can work with. Such a database does not exist in Nigeria. And that is the kind of thing that I need can latch on to have a, a more credible voter register. Let's quickly run through all of this now. Uh, the president, via his verified Twitter handle, said that this is what democracy is all about, respect for the will of the people. The successful conduct of the Oshun elections is a demonstration of maturity and commitment of all stakeholders towards strengthening integrity of the electoral process. In Nigeria, our men committed to leaving behind a legacy of credible elections. And you want to juxtapose that uh, with the fact that so many persons also have commended Mr. President, you know, including myself, that I think that he's done a great job, that he left Nigerians with a gift, the Electoral Act, that allows direct transmission of results in each polling unit, which makes it almost impossible, I said, almost impossible, to rig the elections. What are your thoughts on the Electoral Act? Yes, so I, I must commend uh, Mr. President because uh, from every indication since he's been in office, he doesn't get involved in the electoral process. He, he allows elections to play out the way they should be. So on that count, I commend him. I also, of course, commend him for signing the electoral law, even though his hand was forced by civil societies to, to sign it. And the uh, electronic transmission of results is a game changer in our elections, actually because we can now all follow our results from our polling units to the INEC server. And like you said, it's going to be very difficult to now change our vote in that so-called black box that is called coalition center. So definitely, I, I will give uh, Mr. President the kudos on all this. All right, and uh, we still have Antonia uh, still uh, with us this morning on there of Yega Africa. Antonia, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. So quickly, what, what would you say I that INEC what would you say that INEC needs to improve on uh, with the conduct of the elections? What do you think would be an improvement? Uh, this is probably the last elections. A lot of persons have described this as very important and criti critical elections, uh, you know, because as the election is closest to the twenty twenty three. And so what lessons do you think that we need to learn? with all of the stakeholders now, we're talking about the umpire, uh, you know, the people, and as well as uh, the politicians themselves. Okay. Um, for INEC, um, they have done very well to extend the voter registration. Um, they should try um, and make the process of PVC collection very, very easy for people um, to, to, to collect their PVCs. Because um, a lot of PVCs since 2011 um, registration are still lying um, at the INEC office without um, the citizens collecting their PVCs because it determines everything. Without the PVCs, the citizens cannot... Um, and not um, um, participate in the process. Also, um, it, the new electoral act, the provisions uh, have really, we've seen after the deployment in um, Anambra, Ekiti, and now Oshun, we've seen um, how important and how it has actually affected positively the process of elections. Um, IMEC should also try to um, um, increase that uh, deployment of beavers to um, the pulling unit. Uh, there are some other pulling units who that still have um, a, kind, a high number of uh, people who are still registered there. And so they should deploy maybe one, as a, uh, more than one, as a backup at the pulling unit. And also the new, the, the new um, pulling units that were created to, 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 give, to create more access at the pulling unit, a lot of people are not aware, and then um, and then the distribution of voters by this new pulling unit is not uh, very um, uh, well done yet. 
So INEC should um, look into it and um, distribute voters um, to this uh, um, new polling unit so we can have even distribution of um, uh, voters across um, the polling unit for easy access on election day at the polling unit. And then um, when we talk about the secrecy of ballot, INEC should um, also uh, be firm when they are setting up their um, the polling unit on election day. Uh, people should actually stay where, and this is also where the um, security agencies should come in and, and make sure that uh, people at the polling unit respect the rules set in place and stay away um, from the cubicle uh, where people go to, 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 to cast their vote. And for political parties, uh, they should do better. Uh, citizens, um, inducement at every point, rather than having uh, engaging citizens at the pre-election stage through their, um, through their campaigns and um, having issue-based campaign, they should rather focus on the issue-based campaign rather than um, going to buy um, uh, citizens vote on election day and inducing them to vote for them. And um, for citizens, they should know that for I am um, for politicians to come out and act, give them money, it means that there is a value in that vote that they hold. And the, 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 the PDC is we have their to let power you go and their, their vote is their power and they can make decisions that could uh, Anthony, really affect Anthony, Anthony Onda, whatever thank you. That they make. Thank you yes. so much. We have to go. I mean, we're really out of time. We joined the newsroom at 9 o'clock this morning. Thank you so much, Anthony Onda, for being part of the breakfast this morning. Nika Gulli has also been with us, gentleman and a fine lady. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. It's been very exciting Thank speaking you. to you, uh, this beautiful people this morning. Uh, you know, uh, you also have a senior, senior program officer of Yaga Africa uh, speaking to us. They've been really involved observing the elections and all that's gone through, and also Nika Gule as well. Thank you. But it's important that you understand that the power is with you, and you need to get your PVC, and don't forget to cast your vote when it's time and stand around to defend and protect your vote because democracy is yours. Thank you so much. I'm Messia Book. If you missed out on any part of the show, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messia Book. Have a great morning.